Hi, Laura. Hi, Susan. So right before the camera started rolling, mm -hmm. what were you saying? What was I saying? That you and I have been together for a long time. Yeah. I brought you into my life in 2011, July of 2011. Wow. I know. Yeah, so almost eight, is it nine years? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So you actually have been with me since the beginning of Bear. Right. And um, when you brought me into my life, or when you brought me into my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> When you brought me into your life, what was your goal at the time? A lot of people ask me that. I was getting ready to turn 40 years old, so it was kind of the cliche, it's going to be the second half of my life, so to speak. So how do I want to live? What do I want to do? And I was thinking about, people will often ask me, what was the moment? What was the thing? Because my life changed dramatically in terms of when you and I worked together together habits and a way of thinking about my life and then the whole metamorphosis of how I looked then mm -hmm. and how I look now and it wasn't just about losing the weight which I did but it was about stepping into a part of myself that just had to shine outward mm -hmm. so you know I said it was a million choices that I made after you and I met but I think looking back on what had happened to get me there I had spent a whole decade offering myself up to taking care of my family, mm -hmm. building my career. I had four miscarriages in two years mm -hmm. and adopted a baby boy. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about a quote that I saw from Beyonce recently, where she just did an interview about having all of her miscarriages before she had her little girl. And um, she said, having lost all those babies, she realized in order to be a mother, she had to learn to mother herself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what I started to realize. Yeah. <laughs> so you helped me understand that. And so it's not just, I thought it was about losing about 25 and it ended up being about 35 pounds, but I knew when I found you that it was gonna be more than that. Mm -hmm. And it was. I've done all these interviews not crying. <laughs> Laura Wagner making me cry. I got the false eyelashes on. So, <laughs> so what would you say? I know there are so many mm -hmm. differences between how you were living before mm -hmm. and how you live now. Mm -hmm. What would you say is probably the biggest, or what's the thing that makes you the most proud mm -hmm. of how you move through the world today? I just live my truth in terms of saying more about people when they read my writing or talk to me they say you're so vulnerable you you say so much and sometimes I'll take that and I'll think like is it too much is it too much and I'm like no I'm not too much mm -hmm. I'm proud of the fact that with all of the emotion I feel and all the expressiveness I have that I let that come forth and that it ends up inspiring a lot of people but I think what I'm most proud of too, I have a daughter and a son. So what I've done is for me. Mm -hmm. And I tell women I work with all the time, like this doesn't have to be about you. Like I did it for my children or my grand. I'm like, it gets to be about you. Yeah. But at the same time, I realize the things that I've done, um, it affects generations beyond me. Mm -hmm. My daughter and my son have a mother that lives differently than she thought she could when she was younger and um, I see that in my family my children and their freedom and their individuality um, the way I am with my husband and the way we live our lives it is similar and that is a whatever a normal family is <laughs> yeah what is that <laughs> two married people and two kids in a you know, middle class home in a city in the mid-south kind of but we have our individuality and um, a way we live life that we just take it all in and have beautiful experiences. And I like to think the spirit I brought into our family um, just spurred us on. So, so take us back to before. Mm -hmm. So now you express yourself. You're not afraid to be 100% of who you are. Right. You model that for your children. Prior, what would you say... How are you thinking and living that's mm -hmm. different? 
one of the things I see that shows me all the time is if you have Facebook and it will show you memories every day. Mm -hmm. I've been on Facebook for probably 12 years mm -hmm. and it will go back to 2008 or 2009 and I will see my post. And it was a lot about life is doing this to me. Mm -hmm. That uh, a lot of it, I was like, God, I wasn't miserable, but I was like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> because now I'm such a catalyst for things I do versus being dragged or thinking mm -hmm. things happen to me. So that's a big difference is people think when you work on your thoughts and your mindset that you hit this pinnacle where well, it's only up and mm -hmm. you totally never think, you know, bad things about yourself or worry. And I'm like, it's not about that. You still do that, but you have so much more resilience. Mm -hmm. I love that I can pick myself up more quickly and not ruminate as much. And I'm so much kinder to myself mm -hmm. and just accepting of who I am and my spirit. Um, you know, growing up and thinking I'm too sensitive, I'm, you know, Mm -hmm. too much in some ways mm -hmm. so I think a lot of women think that that mm -hmm. we either it's we're too much or we're not enough yeah and you just get to be who you are mm -hmm. what do you today wish that you could go back to that 12 year ago Lara mm -hmm. typing on Facebook you know more in victim hood? yeah mm -hmm. what would you say to her there's so much more for the taking in every single way. Mm. All the dreams I had, I think sometimes in my 48 year old self, there's, it was an embracing of my 13 year old self from back in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had the short hair then, I wore the different clothes. I sort of saw myself as this sort of punk rock French girl. And now I'm just like the mom who's like that. <laughs> and I think I would have told myself, go within, and go to that part of yourself and, and bring it forth. You know, my career, I've been, I went to graduate school, therapist, life coach. I'm a model at 46 years old. I mean, all the things that travel and see the world, which you and I have done so much of, I think telling myself, don't put it all on hold and um, letting myself enjoy it versus questioning everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the mistakes or things that I consider failures, um, knowing there's such wisdom that I've gained from that and feeling proud of that versus um, what's happened to me and things I've done wrong. So um, when you think about the bear process mm -hmm. and you think about all the different um, ways that food and body issues bubbled up for you before, mm -hmm. um, what do you think is was the the biggest area of growth and surprise for you in terms of food and body mm -hmm. that um, one of the things that you've taught me that I hold on to is um, exercise is not transactional mm -hmm. I've uh, another facet of my career is in fitness mm -hmm. and um, I teach it through group fitness and personal training that was such an awakening to me yeah because you went from I would run, I would do off and on, I would run and then I get sick of it. And, and then I had, I still have issues with my knees and I was like, well, I can't do anything. And you were like, we need to find something you love. And um, as you know, I found the first thing that I just absolutely loved and crushed was Zumba. It was yes! the big thing. And you go to Zumba and cry. Oh, I just dancing and the mm -hmm. joy of that. Um, so I think a lot of, yeah, women use exercise and a lot of what I do is say it's, you know, this is the only thing you own is this beautiful body. Now, culture tells us like you're supposed to do this, shape it, think about it all the time, obsess about it, tear it apart. I'm like, how do you treat it like as exquisitely as possible? What experiences do you want to give it? Because it's with you the first breath you take and also when you leave on earth, you don't own your kids, although you may think you do. They let you know <laughs> that you don't. <laughs> my kids, my you kids have two kids. Yeah, and... my, uh, yeah, we've had that in common. <laughs> that Cora and Ryan yeah. Hyatt are like, no ma'am. Right. Um, our spouses, our businesses, tangible things, they're all beautiful things we've created, but you know, we have this, which houses this and this, and um, that's the greatest gift. So when I talk to people about exercise, people think, you know, when I exercise that I'm, you know, like in prayer and exuberant joy, I do shit that 
hard, mm -hmm. but I also do things that are very loving and gentle. I just am so grateful and proud that I can do it versus I got to get in there and, you know, if I ate a Snickers bar, how much of that is this going to burn off? And that's mm -hmm. how I used to think more right. like that. And right. I think because I carried my weight in a certain way, I had a shame. I wanted to take better care of my body and some of that was losing weight. And if people looked at me because of my height and how I carried my weight, they'd be like, you don't need to, leave. what are you talking about? So I would diet in secret. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, some women like talk about it all the time, but I was like, I, I want to, you know, take better care of myself and maybe change the way I eat food and move, but I don't want to tell anybody about it. So. So if you could sum up how you celebrate and show up in the world post bear, mm -hmm. what would it be? Hmm. I just, I think I told you yesterday, I would just walk into a room and change the energy. I don't do that intentionally. What I think I understand about myself is when I show up and I'm completely myself and I say hello to people and genuinely want to know them and um, make eye contact, see a stranger in the room that doesn't look like they know where they're supposed to be. Um, we were sitting at a table today, my friends Robert and Rachel, with people I'd never met, and the two of them told me when we left, they said, I love how you are with people. Mm -hmm. Different people, anyone you meet, you just um, exude a connectedness to people. So I just think I want to be alive in the world and a participant in life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stand back and watch things. And I get scared every day. Mm -hmm. And you know this about me. I do these big things and then behind the scenes, I'm like, no, 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 it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. But I know, like, if I'm afraid of it, but there's a good kind of fear, like, oh, I can't not do this. This is a part of me and I have to live this out. Then I, I know it's what I'm supposed to do. So I think that's it, is being a participant in life and, um, having experiences, maybe you said this, like what would we want our 90 year old selves to look back and say, yeah, I did those things. And my husband is an undertaker. We own a funeral home. So my thing that I say in a lot of um, my writing is that in 155 years of business, he's fifth generation and someone dies and they're talking to him about their grandma or whatever. And they say, what her, you know, her triumphs in life were, what regrets, like no one has ever said, God, I wish I didn't eat that cupcake. You know, they say things like, she loved that she spent time with her children and she loved that she let herself travel and, you know, do the work that she wanted to do in the world. But those things we obsess about that we did wrong or that we overthink are keeping us from those big celebratory things and the extraordinary, ordinary moments of life that we overlook. Cause you and I, like every day, there's little, you know, sparks and awesome things that we get to do that people go through the motions of like, well, I got to go do this and go do that. We're like, we get to do these things. Yeah. We get to exercise. We get to work with our clients, deal with all the things. So we you can either up. sell it. We wake up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the thing. You did a podcast on what's your movement. Mm -hmm. And I was driving to work and I was like, well, I want women to move their bodies and, you know, do things that they don't think they can do. And I was like, what is it? Why do I get really fired up? And I was like, I want people to be conscious, mm -hmm. be intentional with your life. And like, sometimes I'm just mean about it. I'm like, wake up, <laughs> <laughs> wake up, mofos. Yeah. Because you know, people just don't understand their power and their choices. And there's so many things with, that we can do. Even my little sensitive soul that's like, who me? And I'm like, yeah. Of course you. Just take it. Yeah, why not me? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Laura. Oh, you're welcome. I love you so I much. I love you. Mm. Mm.